As we mentioned, uh, we're sponsored by Hot Pockets this week. Uh, they, they are pockets of hearty satisfaction. So we want to talk about the five most satisfying video game endings. According to us, expert video game dudes. Yeah. And this might be full of spoilers for games that no one has played. That's not true. Some of them a lot of people have played. Yeah, I think but, so. Uh, this is a kind of a weird smattering of, of... We did a lot of research and we decided that there, there are some, you know, there's some impressive endings out there, mm -hmm. some crazy twists, but uh, let's start with the real basics here. Uh, Donkey Kong Country. That man, he fights that crocodile and he gets a big, big banana, but then he goes home and there's a bunch of other different other bananas. Yeah. I really like this game because the way it starts off is Donkey Kong leaves his apartment and then he goes downstairs and he opens up his banana house and he's like, what the, f are you kidding me? Yeah. That's how the game starts. He just goes, he walks downstairs and he's like, ah! And then yeah. he goes out and does an adventure. And at the end he gets all his bananas back, which is weird because it's like, you don't know how long it's been. Maybe they're rotten, maybe they're different bananas. Yeah, but he got that huge one. He got the really big one. Yeah. So it, and he beat up a crocodile on the boat. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, big fan uh, of that. Yeah. Uh, then of course, uh, one of my personal favorites I like this one a lot. Duke Nukem 3D. Mm -hmm. This was cutting edge graphics when I first played it back in 1996. Uh, you take on the, the Emperor Alien or whatever, the King of the Aliens or whatever, and you go up and you fight him in a football stadium and you kick his eyeball out and you kick a field goal and you're like, yeah, it's good, I won. And then the game cuts to black and, and you hear Duke Nukem having sex. Like they straight up play a recording where he's like, I'm in bed with some ladies, and we're doing stuff. Oh, and then they're oh. like, go Duke! And he's like, oh, oh, yeah. And you're like, it goes on for an embarrassingly long amount of time, and you're not seeing anything, so I don't really know. Really? He kind of strikes me as like a minute man. Okay, well, I mean, it goes on for a second, but whatever. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this one I love. Uh, this is really good. I, there's a lot of arguments to be had about classic Jurassic Park games. Uh, I love the Genesis version, in spite of it being sort of wonky, strictly because you can play through that game as Dr. Alan Grant, who is the hero of Jurassic Park, or you can play as the Velociraptor, who is, uh, well, one of the many villains of Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs. Uh, and if you beat it as the Velociraptor, you chase Alan Grant away. You don't actually eat him or anything. But then it tells you that you've defeated Dr. Grant, and you've climbed into a large crate, and then you're getting on a ship that carries you to the mainland. So it's this insane what? alternate ending to Jurassic Park that has no like correlation to the movie whatsoever. They're just like, yeah, that, remember that part in that film where the, the dinosaur beats up uh, Sam Neill and then escapes in a box? I don't either. That's a cool ending. He's uh he's he arrived there in beautiful dithered Miami. I want a uh, shirt of this. I this like how awesome. they can we go back to that picture real quick? I really like that he's got the same pose as when he first comes out of the egg in the first yeah. movie. He's like, it's me, with it's pretty my clever. Claws. Also, maybe he could have I mean he just like tore a hole in that box. You think anybody at customs is gonna be like, hey, what's in that box that's totally <laughs> busted open from that mysterious dinosaur island? You know that box that's going scrap! Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, and then of course, uh, this is speaking of Michael Crichton uh, classics. Uh, yeah, you brought you suggested this one. This is from so I don't know why I got really into Jurassic Park as a kid. Everyone knows why because Jurassic Park is awesome and dinosaurs rule. Michael Crichton also made a bunch of bad books. One of them is called Congo, and Congo was an even worse movie. The first movie I paid adult ticket prices for, so that shows me. Uh, but I got a point and click adventure game called Congo Descent into Zinge, uh, which is. A game about going into the Congo and going into the caves and the temples. And at the end, you get a, a gun that you have to point into the sky and blow up a satellite. And oh, yeah, a, and it turns out it was totally full of delicious cheddar cheese. Yeah, yeah most ch satellites are full of cheese. Yeah. And then you get an FMV sequence from this girl who's just like, hey, you're real cute. Uh, my cabin's open if you want to come by to Zimbai where we can... Do lots of love making. Yeah, and you're no, like, it's weird. She she first she starts out. She's like, "Hey, you blew up a satellite. I had to hack into MTV to uh, talk to you." And then she takes her hair down and she's like, "Want to come visit?" And then, yeah, again, it's like, and, and then the, then it does this. Uh, you see that sign language yeah. monkey come by? <laughs> the sign language monkey that gets drunk on a plane in that film shows up and waves at you. It's like, "Thanks for blowing up the satellite." Go have some fun loving with that weird lady on All the right. FMV phone. So if you don't think that was a very satisfying ending, uh, that was entirely Brian's idea. <laughs> uh, unlike a lot of people, I haven't played a... Congo Descent into Zinge. That's oh, still man, on my really? backlog. That was IGN's number one game of all time. Yeah, it's one of the best Congo games out there. <laughs> uh, then there's uh, there's this classic. Yeah, uh, this is Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo. I really like this one because uh, this game is about the Statue of Liberty getting kidnapped by Shredder. I don't know why. And then it gets airdropped back in from time. 
Uh, and then April O'Neil does a news report about it, and she winks at the camera. But guess who else is there? It's Mr. Were You Seen Himself, Splinter. You know, a large rat boy I mean, in broad daylight being like, there's that thing. Yeah, I feel like before YouTube, you know, this kind of thing happened all the time, you know? Like, that's why they never uh, proved Bigfoot, you know? Yeah. It, but I mean, like, nowadays, this would never happen. People would be like, uh, excuse me, miss, uh, the Statue of Liberty being kidnapped by time travelers is one thing, but there is a mutant rat next to you. Yeah. What a weird, what a weird shameless. New York is a weird city, there. man. Uh, then of course there's a uh, New Super Mario Brothers. This is just brutal. God, I love this one. So New Super Mario Brothers came out for the Wii many years ago. Uh, Luigi is with you the entire game. It's the first truly dedicated co-op Mario game. It's four player. You can play as Mario, Luigi, and two Toads. But Luigi is with you the entire time, ostensibly to save what is Mario's girlfriend. Uh, very nice of him to do that. That's like helping a friend move. Um, when you end this game by defeating this giant fiery Bowser monster. Luigi shows up in a hot air balloon, he lands it, he opens up the door, and he's like, get on the balloon and have some fun. And then you close the door behind him, he falls on the floor, and you fly away. Yeah, and he's got to catch a ride home with these toads. Yeah, because he's like, Mario's like, I don't need a third wheel, I'm trying to get some up on this balloon, man. Yeah, but it is very satisfying because, I mean, I don't, I'm going to make some enemies here, I don't like Luigi that much. Yeah, exactly. So uh, He's like me, he's this gangly idiot who hangs out with a, <laughs> a short squad Italian. You know? That's right. Because we kind of got that going on. We but, do uh, have that going on. Remember that time you shut that hot air balloon door in my face? Constantly. Heartbreaking. Every, that's our commute to work every single yeah. day. Uh, so yeah, those are the most satisfying video games en endings, or at least some of them. According uh, to us, We put the Wind Waker back there as an honorable mention. I didn't want to spoil the end of that game, because it's it's like, it just came out in HD two years ago, or three years ago, but uh, you should definitely play that, because it's awesome. Yeah. I don't want to spoil the, the end comment. of the Phantom Pain, because it turns out you're playing as, as Diamond Dog the whole time. Is that true? No. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs>